Want to see Nicolas Cage curb stomp a gorilla into a toilet? Well, that's just the beginning of this ridiculous movie. Fuck are you looking at? Nicolas Cage drives into the remote town of Hayesville and all of his tyres suddenly get punctured. He steps out his car and sees a spike strip and you'd think this would be a cause of alarm. You know, maybe call the police or something? Nah, I'm just gonna crack open a cold one and stand around expressionless. No, 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 this isn't Nicolas Cage. We're surely gonna see him going crazy at some point. Because that's why we're here. We, we want to see classic Nick Cage moments. Mixed in with a little Nick Cage beating the crap out of animatronic creatures. And yeah, sure, the movie delivers just fine on the whole creature beating part. But Nick Cage's character in this movie is... He's silent. He doesn't have a single line of dialogue. Welcome to Willie's Wonderland. Yeah, he don't talk much. And I respect that. I enjoy a man a few words. He doesn't do anything remotely wacky, and he doesn't even get a name. That's how bland of a character we have here. So in true Hausenberg fashion, I'm going to make up a name for him, and we're going to go with Claude, because he reminds me of the silent protagonist from GTA 3. A mechanic eventually picks him up from the side of the road, and then he starts telling him about the past accidents that he's seen along the road. Well, I think that's what he's trying to say here. I might need a translator. We had a car chase around here a while back. So boy, got 150 miles and I just launched it right off chest with fake man. Yeah, I think I'd sit there silently as well and just pretend I understood. The mechanic takes Claude to see a scraggly policewoman so she can be aware that her spike strip caused his accident. And for some reason here, we get Claude and this young girl staring at each other with an uncomfortable level of intensity. We later learn that the girl knows his breakdown was no accident, and that Claude is going to end up as bait for the hungry animatronics. But we'll come back to that. I'm gonna face them, your face! The mechanic jacks up the price for the repairs on Claude's car. I know, I know, it's hard to imagine a fantasy reality where that would ever happen. Now Claude finds himself stuck because he doesn't have any cash on him, and the only ATM in town is busted. Says the mechanic, which loosely translates to, are you willing to work off the debt? Claude, without making a noise or showing any sign of agreement, signs this contract and we fast forward to Willy's Wonderland, an old, creepy children's party restaurant with haggard mechanical abominations that were once intended to entertain children. To my delight, the movie actually takes the time to give them all names, which makes my job easier too. So we have Artie the Alligator, Siren Sarah, Cammy the Chameleon, Gus Gorilla, Nighty Knight, Ozzy the Ostrich, Tito the Turtle, and the daddy of them all, Willy the Weasel. It's your birthday and we want you to have fun. It's your birthday, so let's party everyone. Pretty scary looking stuff, but Claude is unfazed by how all this appears and just simply gets on with his job. He cleans meticulously and only takes breaks for the permitted time. He only drinks one type of drink and is obsessed with his project of fixing a pinball machine. All of that, to me, just screams autism. Which, you know, that's cool if it's true, but the movie doesn't tell us this, so it's really just my own theory about his character. It's not an important thing, but, you know, it's a thing nonetheless. Well, anyway, let's watch Claude kill some animals. This first fight is one of the most ridiculous things I've seen all year, and I love it. We have to appreciate that it's impossible to film Nick Cage fighting a bunch of puppets, which are sometimes CGI and sometimes a guy in a gorilla suit, without it looking stupid. So I understand why they would mask how stupid it looks by shaking the camera a bunch and doing some crazy lighting. Next up is the Gus Gorilla fight, which is much more entertaining to watch. Oh. 
Now the problem is by this point you feel no tension because it's obvious that Claude is going to overpower every single one of these animatronics, making this place about as threatening as a visit to the teddy bear factory. Claude treats the dead animatronics as if they're just more trash on the pile for him to clean up later, and he carries on doing his job as if nothing happened. Unknowing that Claude is kicking ass instead of dying like so many others before him, the girl from earlier and her teenage mates break into Willy's Wonderland to save him. Now these characters really don't matter, but of course one of them is a slut because it's a horror movie. Hey, hey, whoa, hey, y'all look away. Baby, goddamn, hey, y'all back up, man. When they get inside, they realise he's not in danger at all. I am the danger. But instead of making for the exit, they decide to hang around. The slut and her boyfriend even decide to go and have sex in a room that's notorious for being a place of demonic worship. You know, and also it's a kiddies playroom, so I'm not really sure why you're in a horny mood right now. The only thing I'm in the mood for is building Legos, not spreading Legos. Nighty Knight stabs one of the teenagers through his chest, so Claude slams him against the wall a bunch of times. Artie the alligator then kills the lovers, spilling oil all over her chest, oh no. Claude comes in and snaps his jaw King Kong style and that's the end of that. So before Claude ends up killing the rest of these nightmare creatures, let's give a bit of backstory into Willy's Wonderland. The humans who used to own and operate this place were murderers, and they committed a ritualistic suicide before they could be arrested. Now their spirits live on in the animatronics left behind, and they hunger for human flesh. The town leaders then struck them a deal that if they stopped randomly killing people, they would lure in a stranger once in a while for them to feed upon. So back to the movie, girl one is being tongued by a Cammy the Chameleon, so Claude chokes her with a rope. Scraggy policewoman comes in and handcuffs Claude so the animatronics can have their promised feast. Get that stuff off of her! Willie, I'm so sorry about this prick! Claude, freaking out and panicking without any emotion or signs of struggle, faces up against Siren Sarah and Cammy. Now I thought he already killed Cammy. I must have been looking at my phone when that happened. But I did happen to look up in time to see this bizarre cut. Tell me arms and chins, arms and chins. But you can't arrest me. Is he having a seizure here? What the hell is going on? Tito the turtle has escaped the facility and somehow was on the roof of the cop car. They've only just noticed this. <laughs> Tito then proceeds to kill the policeman. <sighs> Let's just go back to Claude. Claude is on his knees doing something horrible to Siren the S Siren the Sarah? F kiddo. Claude is on his knees doing something horrible to Sarah the Siren, and he breaks his handcuffs like they're made of cheese to finish off the chameleon. Whoa, hold on a minute, those aren't handcuffs. The policewoman clearly said cuff him. Well cuff him! For God's sakes, cuff him! I discovered there's a type of zip tie that the police use called flex cuffs, but they would only resort to using these if multiple arrests were needed at one time. I learned something from watching Willy's Wonderland. I can't believe it. The final animatronic to take on is the leader Willy the Weasel, who actually looks pretty intimidating, unlike these clowns. The policewoman comes back to check in and sees Claude is still not cooperating with his sacrifice. But Willy the Weasel respects this warrior too much to allow her to kill him and he swipes her clean in half. Yeah, it's pretty goofy. Somehow the weasel loses this ability to cut people in half when it comes time to swipe at Claude. Yeah, he just gives him a few surface wounds that he could easily recover from. Claude fills a bag full of his weird energy drinks and bundles some sticks together for the final fight, which is just a headache to endure. So yeah, we're just going to skip over this part. <laughs> Let's skip to the part where Claude drives off with the teenage girl who is now motherless. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned that the scraggly policewoman was her adoptive mum, but I don't think you really cared, did you? They take out Tito the turtle as they drive away, 
but there's still one surviving animatronic in the dumpster. Sarah the Siren comically explodes the mechanic and the crooked town mayor. And yep, that's the end of the movie. Oh my god. Needless to say, I ended this movie with my head in my hands, laughing with a weird sense of pain, knowing that I probably just wasted two hours of my life watching this. I do feel a little bit misled by Amazon's thumbnail of this movie, a pure shot of cage madness. Where was this madness you speak of? Why are you lying to me? If you enjoyed this episode of Plot Holes, please consider leaving me a like and maybe a comment. I'm excited to say that I'm actually working on quite a big project video. It's taken me the course of a couple of weeks to make, but I think it's going to be worth it, so stick around. 